ID by Nicholas Woodsmith. ID, the black-clad patrol officer asked, his eyes not shifting from the computer tablet grasped in his hands. AX567-9B, uh, hyphen nine I replied, blinking nervously. I did not know what I had done, if anything, but that didn't mean I hadn't done anything. If I had done something, there was more chance that they would know than I would. I know, replied the officer. He already knew my ID. All the patrollers did. They knew everyone's IDs. A small part of me wanted to snidely remark that there was little point inquiring if they already knew. I had learned quickly that this morbid joke came with a job. Even a decade later, it seemed to never get old. Do you know why I have pulled you over? I shook my head vigorously, my chin hitting against the mobile identity safety and tranquility instigator around my neck. The misty had been cumbersome at first, but I had soon become used to it. It was to be worn at all times, after all. It could come off rather easily, like any collar, but they would always know when that happened. It was a test, after all. Everyone who wore the misty was faced with a suggestion of freedom and a world of privacy, but whose falsehoods would always be crushed. No, the misty could be taken off, but its purpose could never be removed. Your misty was picking up a level 5 just a few minutes ago. This is a level 4 zone. What you were doing was illegal. Every time the patroller spoke, a white line appeared on his pitch black visor, flitting from side to side. I should have been used to it by now, but even after 10 years, it was still somewhat hypnotic. Uh, that has to be a false reading. I was thinking about work, nothing more. Job clarification? I stifled an exasperated sigh. You should already know. I couldn't re uh, really know, but I somehow could feel the smirk underneath the large helmet that the patroller wore. It isn't my job to know. It is their job to know, and your job to tell me. Defeated, I answered. Personnel enhancement specialist. I have up to, set, up to level 6 clearance in any zone except for state administration facilities and defender of the collective bases. Then what were you doing speaking to me, Professor? As I walked away from the patrolman, I couldn't help but feel a tinge of sadness. Professor used to mean something. Now, it was just a tart he was given scathingly by audacious policemen. It was empty now. It did have some benefits, however. My level clearance was one of them. Usually, a citizen was forbidden high levels of complex thought, but those deemed to require more multifaceted thought patterns were given permission to think at that level. As a teacher or personnel enhancement specialist, I had this permission. This allowed me to think about multiple professions, skills, and concepts rather than the one of my employment. Ever since the Employment Security Act, a person was only allowed to learn one skill. The reason for such a law was that being able to utilize more than one would endanger workers who relied on that skill. Every task had a designated individual to fix it. My task was teaching these skills to people. I was an exception. Yet, knowing these skills did little for me. My misty monitored my actions, and if I was caught utilizing any of these skills in practicality, I would be investigated by them. All I could do was teach, teach hollow skills to hollow people. Nevertheless, I still held a lower level than some. Not even a patrolman held a high rank compared to a few. Even their bosses, the overseers, were low in comparison to the complete, oil-inspiring power of the benevolent, the rulers of the collective. They were them. The state was but a servant to the benevolent. But, for they were truly above the law. Very little was known about the benevolent. And that an oddity in... And that was an oddity in a society where everything was known about everything. The only thing not known were the inner workings of the state and the nature of the benevolent. Games of strategy and bluff had become obsolete years ago, as any individual's unique intent was put on a public, easily accessible database where an opponent was only able to check and know your, their next move. As an ex-chess cha champion, it was one of the few things I missed the most. The state had good reason, of course. Intent was needed to act, and acting could lead to danger. It was better for everyone to know, everyone's intent, so they could avoid criminals before the crime took place. Overnight, crime disappeared. 
the murder and theft that did happen was, of course, legal. However, I digressed. It was not my place to think about the past, or any criticisms of the present. It was my place to teach, and that is what I loved. It might be different from what I wanted. I may not be allowed to cook my own food or fix my own clothes. Even though I knew how, at least I could teach. I still had that. And, well, above all, at least it was safe. I hope you enjoyed listening to this flash fiction dystopian story. I wrote it back in 2016 as a submission for a short story contest, and I hope you enjoyed one of my portrayals of a hypothetical dystopian future, or perhaps maybe a little bit of a comment on the present. Please let me know what you think about this format of audiobook. Do you like these short form stories, or do you prefer longer audiobooks? Let me know in the comments. And if you haven't already, please make sure to like and subscribe. It really does help. Thank you, and I hope to see you again next time.